Welcome back sa ating channel. Naging mainit nga no sa pinsa mundo ng social media. Talaga naman humarap na nga si former President Rodrigo Duterte sa Senado. Dito nga natin makikita na magkakainitan at nagkaharap na nga itong si Laila Dilima at si former President Rodrigo Duterte. Matatandaan natin na talagang pinakulungan ni Tatay Digong itong si Laila Dilima na ito dahil napatunayan nga ito na sangkot sa mga pulburon at mga illegal na gawain. Ngayon nga ay pinag-iinitan at pinagkakaisa na si Tatay Digong kaya naman matapang na humarap nga ito sa loob mismo ng Senado ang katanungan ng maraming netizen sino nga ba talaga ang nagsasabi ng katotohanan at mga pawang kasinungalingan lamang kaya ngayon nga ay magkakaalaman na kung sino nga ba talaga ang nagsasabi ng katotohanan dahil matatandaan natin banat ng maraming netizen na susuportahan nila si Tatay Digong dahil ayon nga sa naging statement ni Tatay Digong na kung may makukulong ay ako na lang ang mag papakulong at walang kinalaman ang mga kapulisan dito dahil ako naman ang nag-uutos na talagang magkaroon sila ng patas na paglilitis sa mga pulburon nung aking kapanahunan. Wal mga kaibigan, panoorin nga natin ang buong video. At kung bago ka lamang sa aking channel, huwag kalimutan i-click ang subscribe button at notification bell para lagi kang updated sa ating mga bagong video. At para sa solid viewers natin dyan, maraming maraming salamat sa walang sawang pag-suporta. Senator, uh, I'd like to thank the committee for inviting me. Uh, uh, para once and for all, malaman natin ang totoo. So, I would like to request sa inyo na huwag ninyo akong ituring president or kaibigan treat me as a witness and uh, tignan natin kung lalabas yung totoo so with your permission at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for inviting me I'd like to start my mandate as president of the republic was to protect the country and the Filipino people. Do not question my policies because I offer no apologies, no excuses. I did what I had to do. And whether you believe it or not, I did it for my country. The war on illegal drugs is not about killing people. It is about protecting the innocent and the defenseless. The war on drugs is about the eradication of illegal substances such as shabu, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, party drugs, and the like, as a menace which ruins people, families, communities, and relationships, and tears apart the social fabric which binds society together in peace, harmony, and brotherhood. It is not unlike slogans which serve as calls for a better future, such as the war on waste, war on corruption, and war against climate change. I have always viewed people addicted to illegal drugs as victims and patients requiring medical help and not as criminals. That is why with the, draw, when the war on drugs slogan came into being coined as first as a message to the, to the people of Davao City 
to stay away from illegal drugs. But at the same time, I had a drug rehabilitation facility constructed in Davao City, a city government expense. Manned by Davao City government doctors, psychiatrists, nurses, and health workers, among others, to look after the complete rehabilitation of those addicted to illegal drugs. I believe then and I still believe now that rehabilitation and not fear of death or incarceration to be the key to the return of the addicted individuals back to the mainstream of a just and forgiving society. But no mistake about it. I hate drugs. I loathe the purveyors, the merchants, and the pushers of this demonizing element. I have not failed to emphasize this from the very day of the campaign when I ran for the presidency in 2016. This was my covenant with the Filipinos who believed in me. And to this day, most still agree with what in government have achieved. It is unfortunate that drug-related crimes are on the rise again. Every day you can read about children being raped, people getting killed and robbed. And just recently, a drug den was raided within the Malacanian complex. This clearly manifests that the purveyors of this menace are back in business. I don't go in it. The Filipinos are anxious and distressed. Self preservation is still the first law of nature. It is instinct. It is recognized in our laws as self-defense. That is why I have always told the police authorities and operatives to be mindful of this basic law of nature. However, I tell them not to abuse their authority and power and hindi ko talaga pinayagan yung abuso ng police o sundalo kailanman sa buong buhay ko and as mayor for so many years and as president. In the guise of protecting themselves. But when your very life is placed at risk and it can be stuffed out in a matter of seconds, then and only then must you act accordingly. Repel the aggression only in self-defense. Alam mo, matalo ko nagturo sa aming bayan sa Police Academy. When I was a prosecutor, to augment my income noon na uh, bago akong kasal. Nagturo ako sa polis. Ang sinabi ko talaga sa kanila, when you are arresting a criminal, you are not supposed to request him to surrender. Rather, you have to overcome the resistance. 
However, pag-ayaw, it's the duty of the police is to overcome the resistance kung ayaw mag-surrender. At kung may baril, at kung tingin mo, sabi ko sa mga polis doon sa academy, mamamatay ka, barilin mo. Barilin mo sa ulo. Patayin mo at least one less criminal in the community. Yun ang utos ko. When I was a fiscal and I was a professor doon sa police academy. Yun ang toro ko sa kanila. No quarters given, no quarters asked. Criminal ito. Repel the aggression only in self-defense. Do not make orphans of your children and widows of your wives. I don't want that in my conscience as mayor and president. Hindi ko mabigat yan sa konsensya ko. I have warmed. But before that, my job as president was never easy, and it was not meant to be. I have tried to do the best I can to address the problem of illegal drugs firmly and without compromise for all of its successes and shortcomings. I, and I alone, take full legal responsibility sa lahat na nagawa ng mga polis pursuant to my order. Ako ang managot at ako ang makulong. Huwag yung polis na sumunod sa order ko. Kawawa naman, nagtatrabaho lang. Yun ang gusto kong sabihin sa Pilipino. At mabutid, niyaya ninyo ako dito. Once and for all, yan ang gusto kong sabihin sa tao. I have warmed all of you as your president. Then, and as a private citizen now, Drugs will destroy the Filipino. It will destroy my country. And I will never allow it. Baski ako empleyado sa gobyerno o private citizen, I will do what is necessary to protect my country, my community, at yung mga anak natin. This is a matter of principle. At papagkamatayan ko yan. Maraming salamat. I'm ready to answer your question. Thank you, Mr. President. But now, I think it's better to hear victim families And then we'll open uh, the floor for uh, questioning and discussion. So, uh, so in, in, the, in order tayo, in order sa kanila, sige, uh, who came, who came, uh, sige, came to sa records ko, no? after, the, naging Chief uh, Albayal, after Bato de la Rosa, Albayal de Gamboa, Cascolan, Sinas, Eliazar, Carlos, Danao. Ganun na nangyari, sige. Okay, the, the question of Senator Bato, he wants to direct it first to, at ito, lawyer pa pala itong ating, lawyer, former police chief, attorney, 
Archie Gamboa. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. First, uh, I'd like to put everything in the proper context because if you only deal with how uh, Attorney Jokno has interpreted the command memorandum circular, you will have your really that kind of bias. Now, as an opinion, there are at least three laws that prohibits disclosure of classified documents. There's Napolcom Circular 2016-002. There's Republic Act 3019, Section 3. And there's Republic Act 6713, Section 7. All of this prohibits on the part of the government employee to divulge plans like this. For your information, that plan that was presented is classified as confidential. There are limits to the access of that. Why? Because while it may not endanger national security, peace and order, and public safety, it might be prejudicial to the interest, prestige of national government activities. It may cause administrative embarrassment. It may cause unwarranted injury, and it may be advantageous to other nations. I am telling this because, first and foremost, those documents are not to be supposed to be accessed by the public. But this responsibility lies on the government employee themselves. Pero ito, wala na tayong magawa, Mr. Chair, dahil lumabas na siya. Now let's go back to how policemen would interpret this. Before we became members of the Philippine National Police, we were members of the Philippine Consabulary. And the word neutralization can often be found in operational plans of the military. It's always there. So probably, as we transition to the now Philippine National Police, we carry the same interpretation. Now, if you look at the entire CMC, the Command Memorandum Circular, in the coordinative portion, it emphasizes respect for human rights as embodied in the 1987 Constitution, respect for police operational protocols, it's all there. So if you take it in its entire context, you don't necessarily mean neutralization is killing. Because it may cause, no, there's a question of bakit nag-iba ang shift ng strategy ng PNP to double barrel. Bakit merong tukhang, merong HVT na sinasabing nagdedetermine ng drug list. When you are a member of the military, even in our campaign against the insurgents, we always start with the order of battle. The order of battle is the list of suspected communists, be it armed guerrilla or even legal fronts. Because this is where you start your work. Because if you start from nowhere, where are you going to go? That's why in our campaign against illegal drugs, we start with a drug list, those that are listed. And then from there, we develop strategies first to look at them, maybe if we can pile the appropriate cases, or conduct probably by bus operations. Ang mahirap kasi, if you take this into just one context and one page, actually I have listed that during the CMC 2016, there was a mention four times, page 3, page 12, page 15, and page 16, and negation in page 5. But if, if a, an ordinary policeman would interpret this, it means it will still be based on how the law operates. As a chief PNP and as a lawyer, I would not allow that it will go out of the bounds of the law. Mahirap kasi pag kunin mo yung context na isang page lang or dito ka lang sa neutralization. Why don't you go through the different pages? This is a memorandum circular covered by almost 18 pages. And take the interpretation in its entirety. Hindi lang dun sa neutralization. 
I don't know what could be the reason, but that's how a former chief PNP and a lawyer says it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. Well, I'll follow up. Yeah. Follow up. Uh, but is the word neutralization commonly used in police documents? Okay, uh, chief. Anong, anong, yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Even even so, in the military, sir. As well, I said, well, in the police, kaya ako kino contextualize. Eh. Wag tayo ano kino contextualize ko. Kaya ba police? You consider yourself military? No, sir. Uh, ay, police. So in the police context, common ang word na neutralization. Yes, sir. If, uh, even if you can see on the so, different six memorandum circular, you see it's. Ay, kaya nga. Well, that's one document. I'm tell, I'm now asking you before ka naging chief, sure. Da uh, lawak na experience mo. Madalas mo na encounter sa police career mo ang word na neutralization? Yes sir. yes, sir. So just as you made the study kung ilang beses ginamit siya dito sa yes, document, sir. Yes, can sir. you give us a study kung ano yung mga police documents na na-encounter mo ang neutralization no. at saka negation? I am just saying, sir, that the six memorandum circular issued during the six, 2016 six, okay. to 2022, six. the neutralization and the negation has always been used in the different circulars. And, and this has passed through at least three chief PNP signing the circular. Yes. And did, did it all start with this particular memorandum circular, the number 16-2016? Number yes, sir. Dito, ba, yes, sir. Kaya nga, so after this, madalas nang gamitin si yes, neutralization. Yes, sir. Yun, yun ang point. Even, okay. even on the memorandum circular signed by uh, chief PNP Alvayalde, huh. maybe because of the misinterpretation, the neutralization has already been defined. Has already been? Defined. In Define. the definition of terms. I'll buy all the time na. Ah, sige po. Chief, itong aking records dito. Ano ka? You were chief of P October 14, 2019. Can you consider ka na ba chief nun? Up to... Yes, sir. As officer up, in charge, but limited on the... Okay. Up to September 2, 2020. Yes, sir. Up. Yes, Mr. Chair. Alam mo ilan ang, ilan ang uh, casualty sa war on drugs? Do you know? Sa term mo? I think it's uh, 662, sir. 662. Yes, sir. We have we have a ready list on the different uh, died in police operations on the different terms of the GPNPs. Yes, uh, but in your, in your particular term, 662. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Teresa. Salamat kay, Mr. Chair. I'll be asking follow-up questions uh, after all the former chiefs PNP yeah, have Mr. spoken, Mr. pero. I think may binanggit po si uh, former Chief PNP Archie Gambo at least tatlong importanting punto. Una, talagang magkakaiba yung sa militar or even the PC before bilang military organizations na gumagamit ng uh, 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 yung target, list of targets at saka yung use ng word na neutralization. Iba talaga sa context nung kanilang dating uh, counter-insurgency operations ng PC at ng AFP uh, until recently na pumipit sa external defense. Ibang-iba supposedly ang PNP. That's why nagpasa ang Kongreso noon ng uh, PNP uh, Reform and Modernization Act to create the new PNP. So ibang-iba po yung paggamit ng neutralization or negation sa PC noon at sa AFP, maaring hanggang ngayon, kesa sa PNP. Pangalawang importanteng binanggit ni former Chief PNP uh, Archie, yung sinabi nga nila na why would they want to arrest rather than have those effect of killing? Kasi po yung isa pang pag-uusapan natin in this hearing or perhaps the next hearings, Mr. Chair, mayroong tinawag na nangyaring perverse incentive. Lumabas na po sa isang resource person. Pag aresto, walang reward, walang incentive. Pero pag napatay, may incentive. At may gradations pa ng magkano yon depende kung low level or high value yung napatay or pinatay. And pangatlo po, I just would like to return dun sa pinresent so far ni na Attorney Jock, no? Attorney Chell, na pati dun sa mga nakuha nilang uh, after uh, reports ng PNP sa mga napatay, uh, yung mga nakalista earlier for neutralization or negation, nakalagay po killed. So in the course of the years of the drug war, in the course of the years of the EJ case, talagang napagpalit-palit na yung neutralization, negation, at yung pagpatay. 
as a description, and uh, siguro in the nature ng mga human organizations sa pagkaintindi, uh, even during the, the operation. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, uh, bago yung ating iba pang former Chiefs PNP. Salamat Salamat tayo, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Chair, thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I have given this body the Google meaning of the word neutralization. This time, I would like to share with you the police meaning of neutralization as uh, defined in, the, in page 188 of the Police Operational Procedure Manual. And it says, neutralization, a police intervention in strict accord with the use of force continuum and or principle of proportionality on the use of force purposely to contain or stop the unlawful aggression of the offender. This may include an arrest, arrest, capture, surrender, or other acts to subdue the suspect. Wala mong nakalagay dito na kill sa definition ng PNP Operational Manual, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mahirap kong ang magbigay ng meaning Somebody from outside the PNP ang mag-interpret sa isang police term. Okay. It should be people from within the organization be given the chance to interpret this term accordingly, Mr. Chair. May, Thank you. may we know when the PNP officially and formally defined the word neutralization? Because sa notes ko, mayroon dash 21, so it gives me the idea it's 2021. Uh, is, Regardless, am, Mr. Am, Chair. Am I, am I correct or not? Yeah, this is 19, yeah. 2021. 2021. Dahil nga sa, okay. dahil nga sa palaging yes. minimis interpret ng okay. publiko yung so, term na neutralization, the PNP come up with the correct uh, but is meaning. It, is it a fact that uh, in the command, command memorandum circular number 16-2016, where the word neutralization appears, wala pa siyang definition on time na yun? Wala pa, Mr. Correct. Chair. But it doesn't mean kung walang... Correct, Walang correct. nakasulat na correct. definition, isama mo na yung puro patay-patay na lang correct. ang gusto mo sa neutralization. Correct. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. Do, do you want to continue with the ex-chief uh, ex center baton? you want to continue? Yes, uh, yes Mr. Okay. Chair. Same question, kung natatandaan nyo pa, sir. Kung same question ni Senator Baton. So, the bold Sinas. We have gen yes, sir, General Retired the bold Sinas. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. First, I'd like to thank uh, the committee for inviting me. Um, nagbigay na po ni Senator Bato at saka ni Sir Archie po ang, ang definition. Yun po talagang uh, inadapt namin, uh, uh, Your Honor. Hindi po kagad patay. Because the, the context talaga, kasi kagaya yung operational procedures, kasama po yun sa tinuturo at saka nasa mga training at saka mga discussion. Hindi po kagad patay. Dapat we do the, uh, after my case build up, uh, the arrest, capture, uh, kung mag-surrender, surrender Tapos kung mayroong imminent threat na talagang lumaban, doon po talaga nag-i-engage nag ang polis po. Kaya nga pinakita rin po kanina na may mga instances din na pag hindi ready ang polis, kami po ang mapapatayan. It does not mean na pag sinabing neutralize, ang sinasabi namin sa mga, sa mga tao namin sa baba during our conferences, our coordinating conferences and meetings, ay patay. Hindi po yun, sir. Ang, ang una talaga is uh, to neutralize, to stop their operations, to stop their aggressions on equal uh, force, uh, just enough to neutralize them. Yun po, namin. Yun po ang ginagamit na term na pinasa na po namin sa baba. It's not immediate killing, sir, ang kuhaan po namin. So we have the same stand po, sir, with Senator Bato and Sir Archie, sir. Thank you po. This is here. Ah, yes. If I may, just, ah, yes, just, yes, just yes, very quick yes. intervention, Mr. Chairman, because I was listening attentively uh, whether as to when the word neutralization came into the picture and the definition uh, came in uh, later, as you may, mentioned, 2021. 20, so my, my next question, or probably a, 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 uh, a uh, practical question would be, uh, how do you come up with a list of persons that you need to neutralize? if you don't have the definition of neutralization? I think it's a, it's a practical uh, question, uh, Your Honor. I take that up sa, in yeah, some yeah. other future I just, time. I just wanted to put that on a... Uh,